built a few gauge one live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Hello and welcome to part 12 of the gauge one GWR Prairie Tank Scratch Build. Ready to start doing the eccentrics now and we've got our piece of material set up in the chuck and all I've, what I've done at the moment is just drill a little centre spot in here. Now the offset is an eighth of an inch. What I've just done is just taken it out of the chuck and I've just centre pop marked, centre popped the position of the other hole to pick up when I put this in the four jaw chuck. And you can see there the offset as I spin this chuck now. So we we'll start off and do that. So we want a good depth down there. The last thing I want is to cut a piece off and then find out the hole doesn't go all the way through. So I've given myself plenty of depth down there. I've got the reamer set up now to finally complete this whole dimension to a quarter of an inch diameter. Cut this down to its depth. Just ease this in gently. I've given myself plenty of depth to allow for cutting two pieces off here. So it should be plenty nearly there. There we are at the bottom. And we can transfer that now to our three jaw chuck. In the three jaw now and what I have to do is to cut a little recess in here, 3 16th of an inch wide, and this quarter inch space in this quarter inch area. So I'll put my little parting off tool in that will do very nicely for this. Let's check that's on height. Yeah, it's okay. So I'll gently cut this recess in here. What I'm just what I'm just gently doing is opening this out. Right, here's the two eccentrics now. And see I've got the shoulder correct on this one. Obviously the shoulder on this needs to be brought down to size. This is where I just chopped it off the end of the bar. I've just sweated it on with a little bit of solder. Just sweated this mild steel thing piece on the end. And it just holds it tight enough for me to take a skim off there. So once you've got it down to the width that you want now it's just a case of putting it back on here, on back on the little hearth, and just heating it up again. I just give that little polish up, but that's um, that's how I've done the eccentrics. Finished now. Uh, the other thing I've just done as well, uh, you can see that they've drilled a little hole goes in here. Little hole there. That's to take a little stub to pick up the drive for the eccentric. You'll see that a little bit later on. The other thing I'm going to do now is to make the eccentric straps. These are the bits that go around the outside. So first thing I will do we just roughly cut them to the, the sizes I want and you'll see why, I've, how, why I'm making them in two halves like this and these two faces come together nicely. 
and you'll see how that works out as we uh, as we progress on this. The eccentric straps uh, basically I so say they're in two halves and they look something like this one half so they're made in two halves another half here and that one oops not very good drawing there look something like that come round and the rod will fit into here thread it into there these are going to be fastened together so the next stage is to put some screws and screw thread in here I'm going to clamp these two together that's the next thing I'm going to do I'm just going to get this screw the right length clamp it together and then I'll spot this other hole through so here's both holes drilled and tapped now so just a case of just putting this other, other screw in here Alright, so these two halves are now clamped together. So I shall just mark these out now. A little bit of marking blue on it. So we can just see what we're doing. Well, there they all are with the marking blue on them now. Just makes life easier to see the, the scribe marks. Just the um, first thing to do, you just roughly going to get the centre of uh, where these are. This is just for our compasses to pick up on. Just loosely going to scribe around our diameter that we need to pick up that hole. There's our hole, the marking out for the hole that we've just scribed. Right, set up in the forge jaw chuck and ready just to start to drill this, uh, this hole out, bore this hole out. So as usual we first come in with our centre drill just to get a marking spot for the main drill to catch on. Okay, that's fine. That's just a case of opening this up, opening this hole up slowly. Start to bore the hole out now, closer to the uh, the finished size. We've got about hundred thou to come off, so we'll just inch our boring tool in so just over 35 thou to come off just check that dimension again just check this bore now get an accurate size on this And there is our hole all bored out, ready for the next stage. It's now just a case of hacking off the excess material now and bringing this down to the shape that we're looking for. So it's just a case of uh, cutting lumps off it. Now let's get that in there and we can, we can make a start on this. Just a few minutes of hacking out, just cutting the the real excess material off. And you can see now it's a case of getting to grips with it with the file now and just filing off the excess to get the, 
the final shape with the file and just start to take off the excess. Now this is now just a sheer filing job now. So you see how this has taken shape now? After a little bit of filing, this is one half of the strap which fits into here. Here's the eccentric completed now and assembled with the eccentric strap and the eccentric itself. And you can see now this just revolves and can move around here like that. Now, the eccentric itself sits on the axle, on the locomotive axle, and that is free to revolve around. So the strap can move and the eccentric can move around as well. Now, what happens is the stop collar is actually fixed onto the axle. So this is the arrangement these locomotives use to set up the timing, to give you the timing for the valves, and it also gives you the ability to have the locomotive go backwards and forwards. So if you imagine now I'm turning the wheel, the locomotive is going forwards. As I turn, this stop collar fixed on the axle revolves and it picks up on the pin that's on the eccentric and obviously now that's turning the eccentric and you can see the eccentric rising and falling and moving backwards and forwards so from here we'll go a connecting rod for the timing valves so it'll move this backwards and forwards now the, this is a very simple clever arrangement so the arrangement is if you want to go backwards you push the locomotive backwards and as you put it, push it backwards, this stop collar moves round because it's fixed to the axle and en engages the pin on the other side of the stop collar and now starts to turn the eccentric. But what that's done is reverse the timing. So the locomotive goes backwards. I so said it's a very clever, simple idea and it works really well on this gauge. Now, the next thing I will be doing then is start looking at connecting the cylinders up with the with their steam pipes and I'll put the chassis back together and connect this connecting rod to the timing and then we'll actually start about seeing if we can actually start to run it on compressed air and this will be a very important important milestone